It's been a while since I've done any car shopping, but knowing today's world, I would certainly go to a website and be able to find any piece of information possible about the cars that I want to evaluate. But what if the same were true back in 1987? What kind of options would be available to me to look at electronically? Today I'm going to find out on Vintage Geek. So back in the mid 80s, it wasn't very common for anyone to evaluate a car other than to physically go into a car dealership. Now, of course, we have websites in every different form imaginable and you can compare cars to other cars. You can look at features, you can place accessories and play with different colors and options and trim packages and everything you could possibly imagine. But back in the mid 80s, none of that was a reality. And some companies were experimenting with the new electronic medium of using computers to their advantage to sell more cars. And one of these particular pieces of software that we ended up acquiring as part of the museum is a disk drive test drive that was distributed from Mercur, which was an offshoot of Ford Mercury. It was a project that was going on in the 80s to bring a BMW-like performance to a Ford. There's a lot more information on the car out there if you want to learn more about Mercur. I'm not going to get into the history of the car itself. What I do want to do is take a look at what it would have been like to evaluate the disk drive test drive back in 1986 or 1987. And so we're going to do that today here on Vintage Geek. Mercur XR4TI, disk drive, test drive. Now it's asking for our name and address, certainly so you could uh, be sent more mailing, uh, more materials. Yes, my name and address is entered correctly. Welcome! You are about to embark on an electronic journey called the Mercur XR4TI Disk Drive Test Drive. With the assistance of your personal computer, we will provide you with all the facts, figures, and comparative data you'll need to make an intelligent evaluation of this exciting luxury sports sedan from Germany. In reality, a test drive is a physical evaluation process which takes into consideration performance characteristics such as ride handling and acceleration. I feel like that should probably go without saying, but okay. Oh, we already got a picture of the car. Cool. The Mercur XR4TI is a precisely designed and engineered five-passenger luxury sports sedan. It represents the culmination of Ford's 70 plus years experience manufacturing high-performance automobiles in Europe. Mercur XR4TI's heritage includes domination of the world's most demanding test beds, the Formula One circuits and world championship rally trails that span the globe. All right, it's a lot of lead up, but uh, hopefully this is going somewhere good. Uh, we've got a menu now and choose a lot of different things. Let's take a look at those major features first. Looks like no other car in America. Its form is dictated by its function and its function is enhanced by its many impressive major features. Mercur XR4TI grips the road surely and smoothly thanks to a four-wheel independent suspension with stabilizer bars in both the front and the rear. It stops quickly with the help of power-assisted front disc and rear drum brakes. And it responds to its driver's command swiftly and accurately through variable ratio power-assisted rack and pinion steering. That's a pretty cool graphic of the engine right there. XR4TI generates its performance from an electronically fuel-injected turbocharged overhead cam 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine. With a drag coefficient of just 0.33, XR4TI is one of the most aerodynamically efficient production cars ever built. It's pretty neat that they put the actual aerodynamic lines in motion there for a moment. Again, this is software from 1986. The biplane spoiler on XR4TI's rear deck improves its handling by reducing lift. Polycarbonate lower body side cladding protects the XR4TI from stones, mud, and water. The interior controls and instrumentation of XR4TI confirm a commitment to the driver as the key element. Everything falls within the sweep of the driver's hand or the glance of the driver's eye. I'm pretty impressed with these graphics for 1986 and being basically on a CGA level. These drawings look pretty good. It gives you a pretty good representation of the car. Now, I've never seen one of these cars in person, so I can't attest to it, but I have seen some pictures online. And it looks pretty realistic so far. The graphic alert module located on XR4TI's instrument panel keeps an open dialogue with the driver. I wonder if that's what the actual module looks like on screen. I assume it does. It warns of such things as front disc brake pad wear, low coolant level, low washer fluid level, low oil level, door ajar, burned out headlamp or brake lamp, and even when the temperature outside approaches the freezing point when icing conditions could occur. 
Honestly, that's a pretty good preview of things to come with modern cars. All those sensors exist in modern automobiles and certainly show in the dashboard, so it's kind of cool they were ahead of the curve on that. Perhaps the most impressive among the many refined chassis components on the XR4Ti is its independent rear suspension. Each wheel acts independently. They stay more vertical for improved power transmission to the road. Again, it was pretty neat that they showed the actual movement there in the graphic. The reduction in unsprung weight contributes to a smoother ride, consistent steering, and better handling over a wide range of surface conditions and speeds. XR4Ti's rear seat is split asymmetrically 60-40 so that three persons can be seated with the entire seat back up. With only the larger section of the seat back up, two persons can be seated, and the remaining 40% of surface area is available for cargo. Again, they're making very good use of the graphics available at the time to show the space that you gain by putting the seat down. Pretty cool. With both sections of the rear seat back folded down, luggage space increases to a generous 35.7 cubic feet. It's pretty impressive. I gotta jump to the test drive. I mean, it's called the disk drive test drive. You gotta be able to do some test driving here, so let's see how that works. Now that you've had the opportunity to experience the 1986 Mercur XR4Ti disk drive test drive, we'd like your evaluation of our diskette program. Please take a few moments to answer the questions that follow, print the evaluation form, and return it to the Mercure Electronic Marketing Services in the postage paid replied envelope provided with your diskette. Now, this part actually makes me laugh quite a bit because if you think about modern day things and filling out surveys and how did we do and fill out this form online, it's just a matter of a few clicks. These guys actually wanted you to print out the form, write down what you thought about it, and send it back. I wonder whose job it was to actually collect all of that data and did they ever make any revisions to the software because of it? I imagine not, but uh, still, it's kind of funny to see. Oh, good news. If you don't have access to a printer, you can request a pre-printed evaluation form by calling toll-free, and there's an 800 number. You know I'm going to have to try calling that number and see where it rings to now. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. We have a special promotion today for select callers. If you are over 50, please press 1 now. If not, press 2. Which section of the program did you find most interesting? Well, I've only looked at one of them, so uh, I guess I'll go with number one. Do you plan to visit a Mercure dealer for an actual test drive in XR4Ti? Uh, I'd love to, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there isn't one in existence, so I'm going to go ahead and say no to that. Apparently, the test drive section of the disk is just to simply fill out a survey. Let's take a look at competitive comparisons. When the Mercure XR4Ti was imported into the United States, it joined some pretty sophisticated companies in the imported luxury sports sedan market. Alright, so it looks like we've got a little uh, comparison table here. And on the left, we've got a list of the import luxury sports sedans, and the country of origin is on the right. All of these cars are driver-oriented, providing some fairly high levels of performance and handling. So how is it that the XR4Ti dares to claim superiority over these fine automobiles? Tell me. Tell me more. The answer to that question is rooted firmly in the XR4Ti's ability to perform into the driver-oriented approach to its design and engineering. And more importantly, it's ready to expose all the facts and figures to the most critical audience of all, you. Please indicate which competitive models you would like to compare against XR4Ti by selecting either Group 1 or Group 2. I'm going to go with the Mazda, Nissan, and Toyota. Now we'll start with price comparison. Now see, now we've got a little comparison table. This, this is very similar to what you would see on a modern website, too, when people compare things side by side. You kind of have these different columns, so another early example of marketing material. Looks like the original base price of this, or the manufacturer's suggested retail price, was $16,361 for the Mercure. That's with a manual transmission. Goes up a little bit for the automatic. How about uh, major specifications? Front engine, rear drive, which is the same on all of them. Engine-wise, looks like the Mercure has a 2.3 liter overhead cam electric fuel injected turbo four-cylinder, where the uh, Mazda has a twin rotary engine. The Nissan 300ZX has a three liter V6, and the same with the Toyota Supra. But features, turbocharged engine came standard with the Mercure. Seats five by default, all the others are two plus two. Comes standard with electronic AM FM cassette stereo. Sweet. A rear spoiler, fog lights, rear window wiper and washer, electric heated rear view mirrors. It's actually a pretty advanced feature for the time. None of the other cars had that. Didn't know they offered that in the Mercure in 1986. In addition to the key features just shown, the Mercure XR4Ti and all the competitive models feature the following in their high level of standard equipment. Pretty good feature set, especially for a sports car. Most of those features would have been reserved for luxury models even in 1986, I would think. 
this honestly seems like it would be pretty helpful in 1986 to someone that was looking to buy this particular car. Certainly more information than you would have gotten electronically otherwise. I assume that you would just have to go to the dealership and ask all these questions back then. Very much a preview of things to come. I like the fact that it shows everything in graphics form. For 1986, I'd say this particular piece of marketing is way ahead of its time. I was a little bit disappointed with the disk drive test drive and the fact that there wasn't actually a driving function as part of the software. It's very cool of Ford to actually put all the information in there and be able to compare specifications and look at all the details. But I kind of wanted that feel of being able to actually drive something. I thought we were in luck because we actually had a disk in our collection. Now this particular disk, I don't know where it came from. It was in a lot of other things and it looks like it's a hand printed logo. There's misspellings on it. I assume someone created this themselves so maybe it was a copy of a copy. The unfortunate part was that this disc would not read. We tried to actually install the program on my IBM AT here. It did not function. So thanks to myabandonware.com, we were able to find an older version of Ford Simulator. It's actually Ford Simulator 1. So we're going to give that a shot here on the IBM and see if we might have a chance to actually do a little bit of driving today on the computer. Ford Simulator. Well, they put a lot of fanfare into drawing that logo and I appreciate the work behind it. Okay, we've got a main menu. We can do the Ford Simulator to take the wheel of one of 16 models. Have fun and test your skills in four events. There's the buyer's guide and the customer response. Well, we've already been through the buyer's guide and customer response for the XR4TI, so I'm not gonna do that today. I wanna get right to the driving. Let's hit number one. All right, we've got three options here, or four options actually. Let's do touring first and see what this is like. We are officially in luck. I see the XR4 Ti is one of the options on the select car menu, so we can actually drive the car we've been talking about the whole time. All right, press I to start car. Weird that you can't just hold the space bar to accelerate. Looks like I'm gonna need a help screen here. Oh, caps lock accelerates. Oh, one through five change gears. All right, so you don't need the clutch or anything. Arrow keys turn wheel left or right. Caps lock, what a weird choice. All right, so let's go on second gear. Oh, oh, a little squirrely. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a little bit challenging, I'm not going to lie. Let's see if I can straighten things out here a little bit. I'm all over the place. The steering is all with clicks of the arrow keys. There's no holding it down to impact the change a little bit more, so it's a little bit odd in that sense. Having a caps lock as the accelerator is also, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm way off the road now. <laughs> I'm over here in the desert somewhere. Well, this is uh, definitely an interesting uh, <laughs> driving simulator. I have to hand it to them on that. It looks cool though, you know, for the graphics available at the time, especially having this much detail on the dashboard is pretty neat. Maybe the drag racing is a better option for me, then at least I can take steering out of the mix. Press I to start the car. I got up to 70 miles an hour before it forced me to stop. <laughs> 10 seconds, 10.38 seconds is the time it's showing here. I think this time I'm gonna try the slalom event, but I'm gonna cheat on this one and not use the XR4TI because I need a car that doesn't need a manual. There are too many keys involved and it's very complicated. I think I'm just gonna go with a real true family friendly favorite here and just go with the Ford Taurus. All right, here we go. I don't remember which key was break. Oh, whoops, just ran over that cone. Did not realize it was a cone. Oh, ran over a second one. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Things are already getting out of hand. Where's the rest of the cones? Hey, I got another one. Hooray. Oh, wait. Oh, no, nope, ran right through that one. Okay, this poor Ford is really taking a beating today. Not sure if they give you a score in this game or you're just supposed to practice. I am definitely not the model candidate for testing Ford products, apparently. I guess we'll have to do a, a quick round with the Grand Prix. <laughs> See if we can get anywhere with this. I like that they put a skyline behind the uh, image. It's rudimentary, but this gives you the idea that you've got some depth there. It does pretty well when I can stay on the road. 
Thank goodness this game doesn't have any actual obstacles. Oh, I crossed 88 miles an hour. Oh, well, I made it through a lap. It was very harrowing. I'm really curious if they're just gonna tell me a message about, you are not ready to buy a Ford, sir. <laughs> you need to stop what you're doing, stop playing this game, and go get some driving lessons. I, I feel like that's where it's going with this. It is fun. It's a kind of a fun, interactive thing, and certainly way ahead of its time. So it's officially happened. I've spent enough time looking at the XR4 Ti piece of software, the disk drive test drive, that I actually had to come see one in person. Thankfully, there was uh, one for sale on Facebook Marketplace, and the owner was generous enough to let me come take a look before he sold it. It's kind of been a weird obsession. I had one back in the 90s, fresh out of college, drove it for quite a while, and always been a thing that I love to drive and a fun car, and I ended up buying this one back in 2013, just keeping it alive. It's a really fun car to drive. What do you think your favorite thing is about the design of, of the XR4 Ti? Definitely the Bi-wing spoiler. That yes. spoiler is the iconic imagery for the Mercure. That was kind of the eyepiece, even the sales brochure, they always showed it from the back with that spoiler on it. It's got this uh, really unique sound to it. It's the turbo spinning up. It's kind of got a lag on power. If you hit the gas real hard, you'll hear it spin up and wind, and that's the turbocharger on it. It is a very distinctive sound that I've only heard in a couple other cars. You know, Ford Ranger and some Thunderbirds had the same engine, but it's definitely got a distinctive sound. Pretty cool to actually see this car in person, especially after spending the time with the software and seeing all the different features of the car, and then seeing the real one is it's pretty cool. Since the disk drive test drive didn't actually give you the option to do any kind of driving simulation, I'm excited to drive this car today and uh, see the real one in person of the Mercure XR4 Ti. So it's about time to uh, take this car out for a spin. This is like the steepest driveway ever. I feel like I'm just fully on the brake right now. Great road to debut the car on. I mean, look at this picturesque scenery. This is great. Well, this is a really fun experience. Got my first opportunity to drive the real XR4 Ti after doing the disk drive test drive. And I gotta say it was really enjoyable, really good drive, fun experience. I wanna thank you uh, very much for taking the time to do hey. this today. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm glad it can get a little bit of attention and um, let people see what it is. So there you have it, the Mercure XR4 Ti, both in the disk drive test drive form on the IBM PC AT that we got to experiment with, all the way to driving the real car in North Carolina. It's been a lot of fun here on Vintage Geek. Hey, if you like what we're doing, be sure to like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot as we move forward. We've got a lot of exciting projects coming up. We've got a lot of different computers and systems to look at. And of course, we've got the museum opening hopefully sometime this summer. We'll have more info on that later. Like and subscribe. Be a part of it. Enjoy all the videos right here on Vintage Geek. We'll see you next time. <laughs>